Well, uh, editing me here. Guess who lost the footage of me talking through this whole pens and use video? So, uh, yeah, you won't see me again, except maybe while I'm writing because I do that side view thing. But I'm just going to run some driving footage. And uh, luckily, the whole discussion that I'm doing at the end of the video is mostly going to involve visual aid. So, uh, yeah, so I think I'll just take... I had some snow driving footage. You know, you, you saw my... <laughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me. My, my video about furries where I talk, I did the driving in the snow. So I'm going to use the rest of that trip as my background because I am not going to go back over, set all the lights and everything back up and re-record stuff when I already have the audio. So yeah, this is the last you see of me. Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. So let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I'd invite you to subscribe. And what do you think of this AI art? Well, let's find out. So let's dive into the pens. All right, so these are the pens I've been using this week. From left to right, I have my Katab, which is a Palestinian pen. I have a Sorry, drew a blank there. <laughs> Pilot Custom 823, Waterman Karen, Lamy 2000, Aurora 88, Jinhao 100, Astura 82, a Noodler's Conrad, and finally a Rex Pen that I call Rex Pen Long Ink Window. So, I'll be doing my writing sample in this cognitive surplus notebook. For some reason I started to write the name of the pen there. Anyway, my first pen is a Katab, made in Palestine. Let's just zoink up the light here a little bit. There we go. Just a beautiful finish on it. Uh, the nib in it is nothing you know, super special. It's a Katab nib. It's gold, but it, you know, it's not flex or anything. It you know, writes well, but it's nothing, nothing amazing. Katab. Uh, the ink in this one, let me just look because I forgot. It's a Roshizuku. I know that for sure. No, it's not. I totally flipping lied. Califolio. Sea blue or something like that. Azure blue. We'll do our little swatch. And try and make this a little smaller because I, I feel like these just get too big. You can see, you know, it's a nice color. Um, and the pen, you know, as like I said, no flex to it, but it's it's comfortable, it's well made, it writes well. This is a daily writer type of pen. I like it. Nice vintage pen. My next pen I've been writing with a lot the last couple of days. In fact, before I start writing with it, so I had this bottle of Aurora Black. And uh, I've been working my way through it. I had it about half empty. You can see it's full. So I had a mini bottle like this. It probably came with one of my Aurora 88s. And uh, so I dumped it in. And then I thought after I dumped it in, I'll bet I've got another one. And I do. Here it is. Um, to make that worse... I've got this bottle of Delta ink, because somewhere along the line I apparently bought a Delta pen. And uh, other than, you know, the little weird fabric thing, darn if they don't look like the exact same bottle. So I got the feeling that when I switch to the Delta ink, I'm going to be using the exact same ink again. But 
whatever. You know, I like black ink. Uh, it's amazing how quickly I can run through this pen and it holds a gob of ink. You know, it visibly drops the ink level. And, you know, one of my goals has been let's use up some ink. And uh, so apparently I'm going to use up Aurora black ink. And it wouldn't surprise me to use it up before school starts. Anyway, because it's a Pilot Custom 823, we got to unscrew the blind cap. Uh, probably not for this, but for a long rating session you do. Uh, also, there are certain inks that don't work well in it. Uh, Noodler's Black, which used to be my favorite black. Um, it just, uh, it's too viscous. So bubbles would come up from the feed and then they wouldn't travel up the pen, so they would block more ink from getting to the feed and then the pen would quit writing until I shook it and let the ink settle down. And yeah, that got old real quick. I'm not sure where I'm going to settle with black inks. Uh, I want to use up all my black inks, and that's the color I go through the quickest. Uh, but after I use them all up, which is going to be quite a process because I've got a liter bottle of Pelican black. But after I get to that point, I'm not sure what I'm going to settle on as my black. Years ago, I'd settled on Lamy. I did a whole video about that. But, uh, I don't know. I'm... I've kind of developed a soft spot for Parker ink. Uh, I, I just have used a lot of that Parker Quink washable blue, and I feel like i got to use the black also. So, who knows? Does it matter? No. All right. Waterman Karen. Very hard pen to show. Uh, the finish is lovely. But uh, I find with however I've got my lighting set up set up, which sounded weird. Uh, you just can't appreciate it. But anyway, beautiful pen. Uh, nice inlaid nib. And it's a mo Oh, sugar heck, I got ink all over my fingers. Wonder where that came from. Gross. And if you're a fountain pen user, you get it. <laughs> if you're not a fountain pen user, you're like, why do you put up with them pens at link? God dang it. But, uh, you know, it, I put up with them because they're fun to write with. Uh, but, you know, we've had a big temperature change the last few days, a big change in the weather. So I think the Karen, because today is a lot hotter than it was yesterday, I think the Karen just went bloop. So anyway, Waterman Karen. This has a broad nib, and the ink in it is a Roshizuku, another brand that I'm using up. That's why you're seeing a lot of a Roshizuku. Fuyugaki! This is actually the lowest level of any of my uh, Roshizuku inks. Doesn't mean it'll be the next one to use up, but... You know, it's a hopeful sign. Probably not one I'll replace. I mean, it's a nice enough color, but nothing special. I want to get down to just a handful of inks. I should probably do that with pens, too, but, you know. Pens are kind of like potato chips. You just can't have one. Uh, this is the lovely Lamy 2000. My fine point one is on vacation, so the broad one is out to play. So the Lummy 2000. This has a broad nib, and the ink in it is the lovely Noodlers Black Swan in a Black Swan in Australian Rose. There's also a Black Swan in English Rose, and apparently Blue Nose Bear is part of this series, which I'd forgotten about when I did this last time. I love this color. Um, when I've talked about, you know, I'll never replace that ink, this is one. When I use it up, I'll be buying a new bottle. Of course, it's Noodlers, so hopefully it's the same color. 
the lovely Aurora 88, which I, you know, I've used this week, just not a lot. So uh, it's taking a while for me to get through the ink in this puppy. So this has a broad nib on it. I kind of like to get a fine nib Aurora 88. I, I just kind of enjoy writing with it. Uh, the ink in this one is Stipula Saffron Yellow. It's been hot lately, so I haven't done it, but uh, I've got some saffron that I'm going to try to cook with. Uh, it's very expensive stuff. Um, so whatever I cook with it better be darn good. I do have an artichoke coming up in the garden. I don't know if there's a recipe that uses saffron and artichokes, but maybe I'll look into that. It's a nice color. You know, I like uh, the concept of yellow inks, but really if you're going to get a yellow ink, the ones that work are more on the orange side like this. You know, I uh, really like the color of uh, Private Reserve Buttercup, but waste your time trying to write with it because nobody can read it. My next pen is an Aurora Dual Fold Lookalike, sorry, Parker Dual Fold Lookalike in a really pretty color. This actually reminds me of the, there was an Aurora 88 in the veneer finish, Venus, which Venus isn't this color, it's a murky yellow, but anyway, I, I thought, oh, I picked the wrong one when I bought my Aurora 88. Well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Um, but I like this pen. And check out the nib. So, yeah, I put a new nib on it. I can't figure out what size it is. It's like a medium or something. But I bought a Nema Sign. I bought a full set of Nema Sign re-entry nibs. Sadly, Nema Sign no longer makes them. So, uh, you know, what I have is what exists. But I really love that concept. Oops, sorry. Jin Hao! A-O-100 and then it's a Nima sign nib of whatever size. You know, the fun thing with uh, Jin Hao pens is you can replace the nib and get a much better pen. <laughs> uh, the ink in this one is a Roshizuku. This is another ink that's getting kind of low. The Roshizuku Amaero. So, this one, uh, I like this color, but I've got several inks that are almost this color. So, uh, you know, while I'm sure my ink collection will forever have a ink in this color family, I won't guarantee it'll be this one, because especially this one's pricey. I like the Lamy Turquoise, so maybe I'll stick with that one. Surprisingly still full of ink, I have my beautiful Italian Astura 82. Oops, come on, there we go. So just a gorgeous finish. Isn't she pretty? And uh, the nib just looks bent. But darn it, the pen doesn't write real well. Got to hold it at just the right angle, but when I do, it's a magic. So the ink in this puppy is, oh, and we've got a medium nib, I think. The ink in this guy is Califolio. Aurora. It, it, it's kind of a reddish orange, reddish brown orange. I'm not good with colors. I like it though. Uh, Califolio has kind of a limited palette, but this is a good one in their palette. My penultimate pen, not penultimate Dave, just penultimate pen, <laughs> is this beautiful 
Yeah. I love this finish. And I'm, I w- would say I'm amazed that it's still inked up because I've been enjoying writing with it, but I refilled it. <laughs> so there. Uh, let's get me some more room here. So this is a Noodler's. Conrad. So I talked about replacing nibs on the Jin Hao. I replaced the nib on this one with a really nice stipula nib. So we've got a stipula. T flex. I've tried a few experiments with the stipula pen that it comes with, including new nibs, new feed, cleaning feed, and so on, and no joy. But I get to enjoy the nib, so. Whatever the heck is wrong with the pen, the nib is fun. So this is Iroshizuku. Tsuyu Kusa. This is, I think, the, f- well, so I've refilled it, so I guess now the second time I've used this particular bottle of ink. But it's a raw Shizuku, so it, it's, I, I bought the small bottle, so they'll go down quickly. Because doggone it, I am going to get my ink collection down so it's small enough to drown in a bathtub. And this pen makes it look good. So uh, I've got a video coming, not this week, but probably next week. This week I'm going to do something different. But uh, next week I'm going to do a video, um, I'm going to be reviewing a similar pen to this. I've got a Senator version of this now. This is a Rex pen, and I call it Long Ink Window. Because the ink window is so long that it sticks up well above the cap when it's capped. It has one of those nice vintage Bach nibs. So this is a Rex pen, which means it's from Croatia, the Toes Pen Kala company that I like so well. So this is a Rex pen. We'll put it in air quotes. Long ink window pen. It's had a nice Bach nib, and the ink in it is Rohrer and Klingner Alt Goldgrün, which uh, is an ink that the level is getting down. Uh, I love this color. I can't think of another ink quite like it, and doggone, if this ink runs out, this is another one I'm going to have to replace. Unlike some others on this list, though, I, the manufacturer, I, the colors will be pretty reliable. So those are the pens and inks that I have been using this week. All right, so those are the pens and inks I was using this week. Uh, so uh, got something kind of different here. If you don't know by now, I'm a little bit of a nerd. Uh, so, yeah, who else gets a teaching degree in physics <laughs> uh, but anyway I uh, one of the things I've been working on adding to my license is computer science I think if I are going into teaching right now I might even consider going into computer science rather than physics but 46 years old and that ship is kind of sailed so uh, I'm adding it piecemeal to my license but you know but anyway so I, I found this uh, website that is all about oops sorry just had the sudden fear my camera wasn't on i found this website that is uh an ai that you type in a phrase and it makes art based off of it there's apparently several of them out there this one just happens to be available to the public and it kind of trolls image websites and whatnot to get its whole uh ideas and then it comes up with things on its own so i decided to try a few things now i got a lean over to my computer so I remember which picture I'm looking at. I will, of course, put these on the screen. Um, 
so you know you don't have to try and peer over my shoulder at them at it but anyway the first image i want to show you it's uh i the phrase i taped in was squirrels on film and basically it's a I don't know, it's a bunch of mostly accurate looking squirrels. One or two of them are kind of funky, but mostly accurate looking squirrels. And I, the first three shots show a little bit of creative, like darkening around the edges, like it's a black and white on a camera. But the rest of them, you know, they're just colored pictures of squirrels. So I don't see the squirrels on film there. So I got a little more creative. Uh, I tried squirrels and fountain pens because... I mean, what else am I going to do on this channel? Um, and, uh, yeah, um, mostly it looks like the squirrels are with, a, with bullets. Uh, there's one of them, I think, maybe shows possibly the nib of a fountain pen. And then several of them have no pens, no bullets or anything, just squirrels. So, uh. Yeah, that one didn't go so well. Uh, so I got a little, you know, I had to do squirrels in love. Because, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up in six months. So I did squirrels in love. And uh, every picture has two squirrels. And uh, almost every picture has hearts. But I thought it was cute. Like, one of the pictures is one squirrel's kissing a kind of deformed squirrel. The other one, they're kind of nuzzling necks. One, they're just kind of eating nuts together. You know, it's uh, interesting. So I tried squirrels and slide rules, but that was just a disappointment. It showed squirrels and uh, no slide rules. So I didn't bother screenshotting that one. But then I did uh, squirrels and adding machines. Oh, no, sorry, squirrels using adding machines. And, uh, you know, they're not the best vintage adding machines, but, uh, you know, the AI made an attempt there. So, cool. So then, you know, Teddy Roosevelt's kind of like the North Dakota's trying to adopt him as their president. We're going to have them. Teddy Roosevelt Presidential Library north of me here in a couple of years. Uh, but anyway, so I typed Teddy Roosevelt as a squirrel. <laughs> Nothing squirrely. Um, you can kind of tell it's Teddy Roosevelt. But he's a little off. So the AI, they even say on the website that the AI just doesn't have faces right yet. Uh, so, what else could I look up? Uh, how about Parker Fountain Pen Collection? I don't know. Um, we've got parts of pens. I can't really see an arrow clip anywhere. Some of them are fountain pens. I see a hooded nib. Um, and then some of them are just, I would say, roller balls. So, eh. so let's see what else we can do. Let's, uh, what was that one? Oh, never mind. It was already there. So then I typed The Typewriter Revolution, which is the name of a book on my bookshelf. So that's why I thought of that. You know, and I pictured, you know, typewriters fighting with guns or something. But no, we've just got pictures of what look like mechanical typewriters. At least retro typewriters. So, there you go. So, uh, then I started to get a little nuts. I thought, aliens meeting with Barack Obama. Let's go to the craziest end of the right-wing crazy sphere. <laughs> and, you know, other than Barack Obama looks like an alien in most of the pictures, um, we've got what's recognizably Barack Obama in all but two pictures. One of the pictures he's meeting with himself, which, uh, huh? Uh, and then we've got one picture with just aliens, and then one picture with aliens by a flag-draped coffin? So I don't know what the AI is getting out of that. 
So, anyway, that was uh, sort of weird. So then, I thought, you know, what, let's see what it does for bias. And, and uh, you know, I... <laughs> I didn't want to look up, like, nudity or weird sex stuff or anything, but uh, I, I just thought... I, I was curious what it would do with nudity and sex stuff. I wasn't on bias until I typed this phrase in, and then I like, what? <laughs> so, I typed person in shower. Now, yes, the person is pretty deformed in several of the pictures. Um, but, do you notice a few things? Like, for one, this person is young. You don't see gray hair like this. Oh! You also don't see anything but dark hair, so apparently no gingers, no blondes. Oh, they're all male. Um, oh, and they're all white. <laughs> so I don't know what that says about the pictures this AI has been surfing, but uh, apparently it looks up, likes looking up young white men in the shower. And it has a fetish for dark-haired men. <laughs> what can I say? So, uh... That was just kind of interesting. And, you know, one of the other things that the website cautions is that this AI makes its pictures based on what it sees on the Internet. So what is it seeing on the Internet? Well, as I researched it, I found out that there might be a reason for no women. Because part of the algorithm for this particular AI is no nudity or sexual stuff. Or violence so I'm gonna just go out on a limb I don't know this but I'm going out on a limb I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the AI couldn't use the uh, women pictures is part of its algorithm because too many of them are sexualized and apparently pictures of white men in showers are not sexualized what does that mean about non-white men or men who have hair that's not dark or older men i i'm not real sure but uh anyway i found i just found that interesting you know what does that say about what we as humans are putting on the internet when you look at it not as having experience with the internet but with totally clear eyes totally fresh eyes as much as a human made algorithm can be um what's that say about us as a species and i just Oh, yeah, that's a little uncomfortable. And uh, <clears throat> you know, the thing with an AI, it stands for artificial intelligence. It's a, a program that can learn. And uh, you know, I just can't help but think of the Technocore in Dan Simmons' book, Hyperion. In fact, the whole Hyperion Cantos, which I reviewed, I think, last summer. Maybe two summers ago, I can't remember. But anyway, I reviewed them. And... Uh, there is an element that is artificial intelligences that are kind of directing humanity for their own purposes. And it's kind of creepy as you go through the whole thing. And, you know, is this where we're starting? I don't know. But, anyway, I just thought it was worth looking at. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure that we're headed for a future like the Terminator or something, but uh, you know, one of the things AI might do is shine a light on some of what's not so great about us as humans. So, uh, something to look at, and definitely something uh, we're at a time when technology is just a, advancing by leaps and bounds. I'll just uh, go off on a little tangent here. When I student taught back in fall of 1998, I student taught at a smallish town, although it would be a city here in North Dakota, smallish town called Slippery Rock in Pennsylvania. And uh, one of the big battles was getting photocopies made because there was one photocopier for the whole school. So, you know, teachers would be lined up trying to copy. Uh, we'd, we'd try and find weird times to copy. And, of course, I'm a student teacher, so I can't come in in off hours and photocopy. And uh, it was horrible. And, you know, while doing this, and, of course, 
student teacher, you're low man on the totem pole, so somebody else has to photocopy, you're, you're out of luck. Um, so I thought to myself, wouldn't it be nice if I could just sit in my room, click print on my computer, and go pick it up when it's convenient? Guess what? I'm living in that world right now. I can even do it in color, which wasn't even something I was thinking about back then. So it's pretty amazing how the world has changed. Uh, when, you, when I look at the computer I was using back then, you know, I got the memory expansion up to 8 megabytes. Yeah, megabytes. Um, I had 160 megabytes on the hard drive. 256 colors, which I thought, whoa, I'm in the big leagues now because the computer I grew up with had 16 kilobytes of memory, 16 colors, uh, no hard drive. There was a five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive and a cassette drive, but no hard drive. You know, it's, it's when you think about it, and we don't because we're living through it, it is amazing how technology is changing and it's really impacting our lives. You know, I've been telling my students that farming is in for a big time change with uh, artificial intelligence, self-driving tractors and combines. Uh, this whole world that they think that it's going to be just like it was for grandpa and dad is, sorry, but that's how the world, the farming world tends to be. <laughs> no, it is in for a big change. And uh, people who don't change with it are just going to get left behind. So, you know, exciting times and also scary times. Um, you know, you think about the buggy whip manufacturers that were out of a job when cars came along. And I was reading an article today about <clears throat> the fossil fuel company endorsed uh, a candidate to run against somebody who's trying to limit fossil fuel development in his state. Um, why? Because they're scared. You know, change is coming. And uh, not all of it good, but, you know, it's coming. And I think the AI is going to be a bigger part of it than we even realize. Um, and this ability to make images based on a phrase. I wouldn't have thought of that back when I was a kid. And... Uh, I'll tell you something else I thought, you know, back when I was a kid. I hated, you, you would uh, want to catch a show, but, whoops, mom and dad want to take you somewhere, so, whoop, too bad. And what do you do? It was, when I was 14, we got a VCR, so I was able to set it to record those programs. But until I was 14, I just miss it and hope I'll catch it in a rerun in the summer. And now, I don't have cable. I don't have an antenna. Um... I don't do direct TV or any of that. But I can stream anything I want, anytime I want. Although with the diversifying of all the different online video services, that's getting to be more difficult than back when it was just like Amazon and uh, Netflix. But I think they're going to consolidate in a few years as they realize that nobody's going to pay for all of them. So anyway... Um, Technology changes, and uh, the world keeps changing, and you know what they say, the only constant is change. So, I hope you enjoyed uh, that look at AI. I did provide the photographs on the link on the video description, and I provided a link to the website that generated them. So, uh, what do you think? Is AI coming? Is it going to... What's it going to do to life? What else is going to change in life as technology just keeps accelerating its rate of change? Let us know down in the comments. So I uh, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.